Hey everybody, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Brandy and we're here with Kiri today. And this is a part of our series about our new experience builder. And there've been some really cool things happening uh, since we launched this. We've seen people building lots of passes and super quick too. So before experience builder, some passes were taking like 45 to 90 days to build. There was a whole project in Asana, a lot of back and forth, but not anymore. So now you can actually go in, build your own pass. And I've seen passes launch seriously in a day. So the turnaround time is a lot quicker when you want to build a pass. There's also some really cool new features. But once you get your pass built, you're going to have to do one important step, and that's adding it to a channel. So Kiri, can you tell us what a channel is and what we need to do when we've built our awesome pass? Absolutely. So excited to talk about channel management today. And just a little bit of a FYI, if you have been with Banduango for a little while and you've heard us refer to an offer, same exact thing. So if you're familiar with an offer, this is all going to be um, uh, the same thing for you. But just kind of to explain overarching what a channel is, it's really something that lives on our Banduango platform that is a hosting ground that holds these different embed codes that then you guys use to distribute your passes on your native site. So it is a very internal item that we use in the Banduango platform, and it's honestly really easy for you guys to manage on your side. And I'll just kind of go through the very few easy steps of creating the channel and then making sure that you have it all set up correctly on your site. So really, step one is creating the channel. And I'll go and show you that exactly um, on our backend system of how to do that. But once you've created it, you're going to have it's going to automatically prompt you to add those passes. Every single campaign that you've created within the system, you can add to your channel. And then once you edit your channel, it's going to automatically um, create these embed codes, these little snippets of codes that then you'll probably enlist maybe some help of a website designer. Um, but it's also pretty simple as well to just place those directly onto each of your landing pages that will then host those elements to allow people to sign up. So really easy process, sometimes just kind of like hard to wrap your head around a little bit, but that's what we're here for. Help everyone understand um, of how it works. And one thing that you might hear us say is Banduango's true best practice is to have one single channel. There's a lot of pros for doing it this way. Um, and just so you know, we kind of title it as an experiences channel. There is a portion of when we title these channels that they are pass holder facing. So you want the title of your channel to really be overarching to all of the potential use cases of passes that you might have fall underneath this one overarching channel. So we use experiences, um, but it's totally up to you guys of how you want to title that. Um, but there are a lot of pros as to why we really like to steer our partners into using one's channel. One thing that's the coolest, in my opinion, is it allows you to cross promo all of your passes. So if you have one channel where all of your passes live within that channel, when, when a pass holder signs up for one pass, under the Explore tab, they have the opportunity to sign up for every pass that you have that's active under that channel. So they don't have to navigate back to your site. You don't, you know, it's just a really good marketing tactic within the mobile pass. Um, I will say there is a caveat. If there's anyone who has like a single audience pass, like a show your badge or some sort of VIP prog program that you don't necessarily want accessible to everybody, it's totally customizable on your end. You can you can um, customize who you have and what passes you have under that Explore tab. So don't feel like that's a limitation. Um, another thing makes it so much easier for pass holders because when they sign up for a pad or they sign up for multiple passes that are all underneath your single channel, they're all going to be accessible under the same save to home screen icon. They can see all of their passes in one central location on their phone or on their mobile device. So they're not having to go back and forth, figure out where they signed up, find a bunch of different icons. It's all accessible under one central location. So it just makes it really easy for pass holders to access all of their passes in one streamlined location. And then something that I'm sure your web developers and you guys who are managing your sites will really enjoy about this portion of it is the embed code management. And I'll show you, I'll, 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 I will better illustrate it once I show our um, back end system. But there's one kind of overarching snippet of code for each of your channels. And if you have multiple channels, you're going to have to manage those separately. But if you have one channel, you'll only have that 
single overarching code, and then you'll just need to switch out the elements for each of your specific passes. So just makes it much more ease of management from a website perspective. With that being said, we do acknowledge that there is a few scenarios where you might need um, multiple channels or a separate channel. Um, one one use case that I see happen most often that makes sense to maybe have a separate channel is if, let's say, all of your passes kind of live underneath the umbrella of your of your organization, but maybe you are um, you're partnering with a few different organizations for one specific campaign, and you do want to emphasize a different branding for that kind of working with a bunch of different organizations together. Um, because when you have that single channel, it's also one single overarching branding, which is good for branding consistency. But in some cases, you do need some different branding to emphasize some of those different sponsoring partners that are kind of working with one coalition. Um, there is different ways to work around this, honestly, and I'll show you once I uh, once I show what this looks like in real time from a pass holder. But um, just realize that the limitation with this is then you don't have the opportunity to cross promote your other passes within the mobile pass when someone signs up for the pass under that single channel. So um, that's kind of the differences between single channel, multi channels. Again, our best practice is always going to be single channel. Um, from now or from here, I'm actually going to show kind of what different landing pages look like when people place their embed codes and what that looks like on mobile when you do have a single experience uh, experience channel with a bunch of different passes underneath it. And then I'll also kind of go into how that actually looks in the back end and how you guys um, are empowered to manage this on your own. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And while Carrie's doing that, if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll address those too. Absolutely. All right. So Visit Eau Claire does a, they have a great landing page. It's, you know, simple. And honestly, we always push for simple. We want our, we want our consumers to know exactly what the, act, the expected action is on this site. So here is an example of they have three different passes. They have them all underneath one channel. And the different ways in which you can manage those embed codes is they have kind of, they have all of these on one site and this is all one single channel. They also have kind of these specific landing pages where you can see exactly what this looks like, what our Abandwango elements look like when it's placed on different landing pages. Sorry, load time is just spectacular over here. But let's see. Okay, so these are the different Bandwango. When I, when I talk about the Bandwango elements that you're going to place on your site um, that you're sourcing from these channels, you're going to see a product card right here. And then you're also going to see how it works, how, how this pass works module right here. And these are all customizable. So here's an example of a partner of ours that has multiple passes under one channel, which is the majority. I want to show you what that looks like when I sign up for, for these passes. So I have signed up. You can see that they had three passes available on their site, and I've signed up for two of them. So I signed up for the Eau Claire Brew Pass. I also signed up for the Eau Claire Ology. And once I sign up for them, now they're both, I can access both of them from the same, from my same mobile pass. It's all in one central location on my device. But also the coolest part is when I go to the explore tab right here, oh, when I go to the explore tab right here, you can see that they had a third pass that was available that I hadn't signed up for. And now I can see that this is available. Oh, I must've not seen this one. I wanna sign up for it. Once I add it, I can opt in as normal, just like a normal checkout flow. And it's just that easy. And now when I go to my experiences where I can see all my passes, I can see that very new one. It's super easy to cross promote, super easy to sign up for all of the passes that you guys have in market if we utilize that single channel. Now I know I talked about that there was the possibility of having, you know, someone needing one channel or sorry, needing a separate channel. So in this case, Seattle Good Business has passes that they have that's just under Seattle Good Business. They also have a pass that they have kind of this coalition that they title Seattle Restored, where they have three different organizations that are kind of teaming together for this one campaign. So in this case, they do have a separate channel that is just Seattle Good Business. And then they also have a separate channel for that just houses this one pass. 
And from a pass holder's perspective, it would be in two different locations on my mobile pass on my mobile home screen. So in this case, I've only signed up, let's say, for this one, the Seattle Restored. There's only this one pass um, that's on that channel. So I only have access to the one. Um, and really what that's affecting when I talk about like if they needed specific branding, it's really just referring to this um, uh, this horizontal logo up here. So there, like I said, there is ways that you don't necessarily have to go this route. If they wanted this to still say Seattle Good Business, but then they just branded the mobile pass header to include all of the different organizations within this coalition, as well as titling it, they could absolutely go that route. It's just kind of up to you guys and how much, um, how much of that specific branding you want. But then realize that those other passes that they have are not going to show on the Explore tab. Um, and once they sign up for those other passes, they're going to live in a separate location on their mobile device. So just kind of illustrating the differences between having kind of one channel that has all of those passes and maybe some of the different circumstances where you might need um, a, a separate channel. Now I'm just going to kind of pop into the back end of what it would look like when you guys are in here. So when you when you guys log in, I imagine it auto you guys auto get to this uh, passes portion. This is on your global nav bar. When you're on this global nav bar, if you go down to channels, this, this is where you're going to see all of the channels that you currently have. In 99% of cases, when we create your account instance in our back end, it auto creates this one uh, channel that is likely just gonna be titled the name of your organization experiences. So in, honestly, in most cases, you're not really gonna need to create a new channel unless you're kind of, questioning if it makes sense to create a new one. I'll honestly always lean on our team. We can give you some best practice and some guidance on if and when you guys do need a separate channel. But in most instances, you're just going to be working within this channel that is already created um, in here. So once you've created your past, created your past, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. You're going to go in here to view your channel. And this is where you can add your passes. So add item is just pass. So I'm going to add the one pass that I have in here add it in here, and now you can see that this pass is within my channel. We have some different options over here on the right-hand side to be able to make some changes to how these appear on your channel, which will in turn be how they appear on your native site. So here, these are activation dates. Um, this is, if I set a deactivation date, this just means that that's going to automatically fall off of your landing page once this date hits. So if you know that you know you no longer want pass holders to be able to sign up as of the end of the year, you're going to put that date here and it's going to automatically fall off of your landing page. You don't have to manually remove that code um, from your site. And then, like I mentioned, we have that explore tab. If you want this pass to appear on the Explorer tab for anyone who has signed up for any of your passes that are on this channel, you can toggle this on. Like I said, if you have some closed audience passes that you don't that you only want on a separate landing page, but you don't want it on the Explorer tab, it's totally fine. You can keep it on the same channel and toggle it off from the Explorer tab, and it won't appear to anybody unless they have access to that landing page. Um, pricing discounts has to do with it's a paid pass, and it'll just allow you to make some changes if you wanted to discount it at this um, overarching level. So I'll update that here. You'll also see this little settings. And this is where you can update, again, how this product card appears on your site. So if there was pricing, you know, you could make the pricing show if it's free, you, know, you can just have it say free or not in, I mean, in, in, in all cases, in my perspective, you would want the learn more to show because that's what's going to kind of populate the venue list so people can preview what they're getting into when they sign up for the pass. You've got this CTA button. Um, this is just a different call to action. You can title it whatever you want, um, get yours, you know, whatever, however this matches your branding, you can change it here. We do have the capability to add a little tag here and you can kind of change these of like, um, you know, great offers or whatever. You can add the little tag up here and you can also change the color of that if you wanted. So we move this over here, except, you know, and then you can add a little tag up here. The color of this get yours button is actually within your global settings. Um, and then you can just set that and that's overarching to match your brand. But so here is where you can kind of change exactly how your product card appears on your landing page. So I'm going to go ahead and update that. So now I can see that it's active. It's on here. Then the question begs, well, how do I get these codes onto my site? 
and you're going to see some of these options specific to your channel, this nav bar over here. Embedded is where you're going to spend a lot of your time when you're doing this channel management. When I spoke to the fact that it gets a little bit more complicated when you have multiple channels and you're trying to manage these embed codes, this embed code right mm -hmm. here is specific to the channel. So this one is always going to be placed on your site, and that's what's just going to make all of the other elements work. And when you are wanting to set these embed codes, how you view them is in this view instructions right here. You're going to be able to see that overarching code that needs to be placed. There's also um, much more detailed descriptions on here that can help you or your web team get these placed. But just so you kind of know what you're looking at is these specific embed codes right here correlate with those two kind of modules is what we call them um, that will be placed on your site. So you've got that item card, that's where they sign up. And then you've got that how it works module that kind of explains the steps on how to sign up. So this is how you can um, view those, send this over to your web team. This is how you can view those um, embed codes for the specific channel. How you can honestly view what it looks like and also sign up and kind of see how the um, embed codes match up. This is exactly what you'll see on your site. So this is the product card, that item card module. Once you place your code, this is exactly how it's gonna appear on your site. And then here is that how it works module that has some just some default language of how to sign up. And you can always put this on top of that. These two codes are completely separate. So you can place it on your site however you um, however it works best for your site. And then one thing also to note that if that how it works language, the default language that shows up isn't as pertinent to the use case of your pass, you can always make changes in here. And the embed code for this specific module does actually, well, never mind. But, oh, sorry, it's up here. So the embed code for this specific module is right here as well. And it coincides with those modules that you can see right here. So this is really the best way to manage those embed codes, be able to place them on your site see exactly how they look. And again, if you wanted to sign up for your pass before placing it on your site, this is operational. This is completely functional. So you can go through the checkout flow exactly from here. Again, this is exactly how it's going to appear on your site, but this is just kind of a nice testing ground to test how these functions before you place them. All right, you'll see some other options here on the left, some message lists. These are really um, those opt-in messaging. So when you're going through the checkout flow and you want to gather that first party data, um, these are ones that are automatically created. These are just kind of our default ones. I'd like to receive information about my past that enables you to send some messaging about pricing or anything that is specific to their past, as well as I'd like to receive occasional information from, and then this just populates with your organization title. And this is really where you can get those um, lists to send out newsletters and where you can kind of, again, gather that first party data to send out some of your newsletters and, um, and things like that. So this is where you can see add a message. These ones, like I said, automatically are automatically created. But if you ever want to create new ones that are specific to your organization, or maybe that's just time specific for this month, I wanted to gather some specific information over here on message lists in your global panel, you can create new message lists. Once you create it, it'll populate here. And then this is what it, that is, this is what is going to show up on that checkout flow when people are signing up for passes on the channel. You will see settings down here. And this is kind of when I talked about the differences of if you need to, ooh, let me refresh. Sorry, it might again just be some loading time. Well, that's interesting. For the sake of this, I'm going to try to actually pull up another one. This is what it normally looks like. Not sure why it wasn't populating over there. But as you'll see, is this is kind of where the branding lives. So if we just want it to be the same branding that you have on your global settings, this is what the default is. So all of those default settings are going to pull over from um, onto this channel. So all of your default things live on the left. So this is that horizontal logo that shows at the top of the mobile pass. This is that experience, like the background image that's going to show behind all of your mobile passes and the email header. And then again, this is also where you can change those colors for your CTA buttons to match your branding. 
if like you need to create a separate channel that needs to be completely separately branded, this is where you can override those default settings. Um, so like in this instance, their specific save to home screen icon isn't Seattle Good Business, it's Seattle Restored. So they just have that specific branding. And this is where you would override for any specific channels that you needed to make separately. But again, in most cases, Keep it simple on yourself. Keep it simple on your pass holders. You're going to really want to use that one channel and just use those um, defaults from the from your settings. And you don't need to make those updates here. That's where you can manage it over here in your in your global settings. And this is where all of that can be added. And then it'll just automatically populate to your channel. The last kind of elements on here that we can go over is communication. This is just kind of all of the copy, all of the text that is associated with any actions that take place. So when someone signs up for a pass, they're going to get this default language. A lot of this is just auto, uh, this, all of this, this is just boilerplate language. Um, I don't think many people change this up because it is pretty default. We want to keep it as simple as possible. Um, but just know that you can change this on your channel if you wanted it to be a little bit different. And then here's kind of a, a little glossary of these automatically pull from their order information. So if you put customer name, it's going to say Kiri Kurtz in my example, if it was for mine. The last thing on here is these FAQs. And again, these are going to populate our general ones, just that we know historically have been some pretty frequently asked questions. But if you know that there's specific specific FAQs that you want to add, you can change these up. You can get rid of these. You can add new ones. You can change the order. And just realize this is going to be on the overarching level. And let me show you exactly what I mean by that is you'll see that there's an FAQ button right here when you're on your a main mobile pass page. This is those offer level FAQs. They're a lot more general. When you're in your pass and you want more very specific pass FAQs, it is separate. So just realize that, especially when you have an experiences offer that has multiple passes, you don't want the FAQs that are appearing right here in your channel section to be specific to one single pass because you're going to have lots of passes um, that appear here and you can manage those pass specific FAQs on the pass level which lives right here. Um, and that just lives when you're in your passes. You can see that um, your FAQs are down here. Oh, sorry. When you're in your passes and you go into a pass, those pass level FAQs are down here. So just kind of wanted to call out the differences on where those two FAQ locations live. But I think that that is all I wanted, I wanted to illustrate how it kind of works in the back end, what it looks like in real time on different landing pages and how that looks um, from a mobile pass perspective when you do use different channels. But mostly, if you're getting a little bit confused with channel management, please reach out to our team. We can give you guidance on if we think a, a different channel is needed or how we can best guide you through that if we do want to maintain a single channel and also how to place those embed codes. So please always, always, always lean on our team. Awesome. Thank you, Kira. You made it look so easy. <laughs> um, and if you do have any questions, of course, you can go to app.banwango.com. When you log in in the bottom left, there is our help button. And there are real live people there that can assist you with any of your questions. You can also email us at success at banwango.com. And we're happy to help you however we can. And then, Kiri, I wanted to just share the, the cool examples that you shared with us today from Eau Claire and Seattle because they had some good landing pages. So um, always a big fan of good landing pages. And then also, too, I'm a big fan of the Explore tab. I love, like, the passes I have, um, having all of them in one place. Like, it's so easy for me for when I'm using them. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. And then definitely, as far as marketing, like Kiri was saying, um, being able to sign up for more there. It's great to be able to explore more in the area, have everything in one place. So definitely take advantage of those. If you have questions, reach out to our team. We do have another webinar coming up in a couple weeks, November 7th. Our next one is about the merchant portal. And you can scan this QR code right here and get signed up for that. Um, in the meantime, Thank you so much for joining us today to learn more about channel management um, and have a great rest of the day.